<clears throat> all right, guys. Hey, thank you all so much for joining me today. We are going to be looking at Genesis 29. All right, guys, making our way further and further through this wonderful book that fills us with faith and joy and more than that well not more than that but also it fills us with this um or at least it fills me with this profound connection to our brothers and sisters in faith throughout the years a profound connection to the patriarchs and, and all the way back to the roots of creation amen we are one we are unified we are one blood Amen. In a world where they're constantly trying to divide us, to split us, to all of these things, we are one blood. We are all fallen. We are all in need of a Savior. We all have access to a Savior, the same one Savior. Amen. Um, you know, when God formed man out of the mud breathed life to him, into him. It wasn't a black man. It wasn't a white man. It wasn't a yellow man. It wasn't a red man. It was a man. And then it was a woman. It wasn't all of these other silly dividers that we are constantly inundated with. Um, forgive me if I... <laughs> Well, it's not showing up too bad. I am extremely red, guys, from working outside the last couple days. Very sunburnt. I have a hole like this, like the back of my hat on my head right here that's very red. <laughs> but God is good, amen. You know, I, I lived so many years addicted and just in an awful way. And it's not that now. And, and what happened in between was Jesus Christ. It wasn't me. It was Jesus Christ. Um, let's pray. We'll get into what I have on Genesis 29. I'm sorry this is a day late. We'll talk about this kind of in the prayer. Um, Heavenly Father, I want to come before you today, Lord. I want to praise you for being the great I am. I want to praise you for the glorious act of creation and the beautiful redemptive art that you put in place that found its ultimate fruit in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and his profound, powerful, and, and unmatchable atoning sacrifice on the cross. His purchasing of us at such a high price. And I am so thankful, Lord. I want to quickly ask that this video, Lord, that it provide nourishment to your flock, that it be spiritual bread and milk for or spiritual bread and meat for us and not just milk not just surface level but deep provision to our souls allowing us to become more and more mature as believers allowing us to have a closer more productive walk with you father god i would also ask that it be able to catch the eye the ears the needful attention of anyone out there still lost to sin still lost to addiction still lost to the foolishness of the flesh still lost to the foolishness of pride still lost to the foolishness of the world and the darkness of the enemy and the lies that are promulgated upon us lord from every direction help us to lift you up as the only true way father god i would also ask that you uh you be with those families right now suffering due to the shooting in Nashville. I would ask that you have your hand over this nation, Lord, and, and help to wake us up. Help to open eyes to you, Father God. Help to open eyes to the divine. Help people to see that there is a spiritual battle going on for souls and that this darkness we see in the world is just an overflow of that into the physical. And until we address that root problem, we will never stop the spread of this darkness as it just seeks to decay humanity. But Father God, I know you are the answer. Father God, I know I am going to heaven. Father God, I know my brothers and sisters are going to heaven. Help us to display that to the lost more effectively, more profoundly, and help us to be bold, Lord. Help us to not be afraid to 
call things out as they are, to be discerning believers and bold in our walk. Father God, we would pray for a hedge of protection around the lives of and a blood covering over the hearts and over the minds of children and the infirm and anyone unable to do so for themselves, Lord. Help us to be your spiritual warriors. Help us to be your bright and shining city on a hill that says there is but one way and this is it. Hell is so real, Father God. Hell is so real. If there's anything that we can do to make that more clear, help us, Lord. Salvation is a necessity, Lord. If there is anything we can do to make that more real to others, Lord, help us to do that. Use us in your will, Father God. Allow us to be tools to further the kingdom, Lord. Guide us, lead us, and direct us. And we pray all of this in the mighty, holy, powerful, and merciful name of your Son and our Savior, my Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, in your holy and heavenly name we pray. Amen. God is so good, guys. He is so good. All right, let's get into this, guys. Genesis 29, thank you guys so much for letting me share with you. It really does. It means so much to me. I'd love to know what you think of the videos is or things you would like to see, things that maybe you don't like so much. I'm happy to hear it all. All right, Genesis 29. Jacob meets Rachel is the little subheading on my Bible, guys. Let's go. So Jacob went on his journey and came to the land of the people of the east. And he looked... And saw a well in the field, and behold, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it. For out of that well they watered the flocks. A large stone was on the well's mouth. Now all the flocks would be gathered there, and they would roll the stone from the well's mouth, water the sheep, and put the stone back in its place on the well's mouth. And Jacob said to them, My brethren, where are you from? And they said, We are from Haran. Then he said to them, Do you know Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, We know him. So he said to them, Is he well? And they said, He is well. And look, his daughter Rachel is coming with the sheep. Then he said, Look, it is still high day. It is not time for the cattle to be gathered together. Water the sheep and go and feed them. But they said, We cannot until all the flocks are gathered together and they have rolled the stone from the well's mouth. Then we water the sheep. Now, while he was still speaking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherdess. And it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his, bro his mother's brother. Then Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's relative and that he was Rebekah's son. So she ran and told her father. Then it came to pass, when Laban heard the report about Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. So he told Laban all these things, and Laban said to him, Surely you are my bone and my flesh. And he stayed with him for a month. Then Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my relative, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what should your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were delicate, but Rachel was beautiful of form and appearance. Now, Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you for seven years for Rachel, your younger daughter. And Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to another man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed only a few days to him because of the love that he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go into her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. Now it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah his daughter and brought her to Jacob, and he went in to her. 
And Laban gave his maid, Zilpah, to his daughter Leah as a maid. So it came to pass in the morning that, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? Was it not Rachel that I served you for? Why then have you deceived me? And Laban said, It must not be done so in our country. To give the younger before the firstborn? Fulfill her week. And we will give you this one also for the service which you will serve with me still another seven years. Then Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. So he gave him his daughter Rachel as wife also, and Laban gave his maid Bilhah to his daughter Rachel as a maid. Then Jacob also went in to Rachel, and he also loved Rachel more than Leah, and he served with Laban still another seven years. All right, guys, we're going to check out verse 31 and on now. This is really tied more, this section, more to chapter 30, but it is here in chapter 29. Verse 31, let's go. When the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. So Leah conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Reuben. For she said, The Lord has surely looked on my affliction, now therefore my husband will love me. Then she conceived again and bore a son and said, Because the Lord has heard that I am unloved, he has therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. She conceived again and bore a son and said, Now this time my husband will become attached to me because I have borne him three sons. Therefore his name was called Levi. And she conceived again and bore a son and said, Now I will praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah. Then she stopped bearing. All right, guys. All right. So first off, thank you guys so much for letting me share with you. I know I say it all the time, but it really does you guys mean so much. Uh, I love reading your comments. I love finding these amazing things to nourish myself. And then to be able to share them with you is, is such a blessing. I, I basically imagine that that's you right there where this phone is setting recording me. I just imagine that's you. And by the way, you look amazing today. All glory to God and welcome or welcome back my fellow hungry souls, my fellow walkers in faith and any and every lost and needful soul. Guys, I'm Rex, an ex-dope fiend, 20 years, heroin, meth, blah, 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 all the awfulness, five years ago, cried out to Jesus Christ, here I am, he's amazing, and now I am a grateful child of God, that is the fuel for this channel, now you just heard Genesis 29, so stay with me, tie up those shoes, and let's go walking in the word, all right, now, before we jump into the verses, let's start with just some general overview, all right, um, first, Let's talk about how being a traveler, as Jacob was in this land of Padan Aram or Haran, he was a traveler. He was a traveler with no possessions. So Jacob was at a, a very real, on his own, Jacob was at a very real disadvantage in finding and procuring a wife. And so this does lead to his seven years of service to cover what would be known as a dowry. Now, over the course of chapter 29, we see the, the, the mighty, perfect, beautiful, providential hand of God bless Jacob by allowing this meeting with Rachel. Now, irony, <laughs> irony could be a character in this chapter, it's so present. Irony is also on full display as Jacob, as we know, once a deceiver, is himself deceived in the section from verse 15 to 29. Now, behind all of this, behind the curtain of all of this, as it always is, is a sovereign God at work, bringing his divine will and purpose to bear. As the reader, we previously in chapter 28, read God, declared to be with Jacob. And guess what? To no one's surprise, here he is. Because when God says it, God delivers it. All right? Let's look at verse 2 real quick. 
And he looked and saw a well in the field, and behold, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it. For out of that well they watered the flocks. A large stone was on the well's mouth. So this meeting at the well, if you've been following along with this through our time in Genesis, Genesis, this likely registers as highly familiar because it draws a line directly back to Genesis 24, to the previous patriarch. Genesis 24, 11 through 33, and the other meeting of the wife at the well. And we also see God's divine providence while offering us up a bit of a contrast from the prior. While it does draw a line, there's also this contrast because in the prior meeting at the well, we had a prayerful servant who, though himself not a Jew, was a, was a believer because he saw his master's God at work, right? And, um, sorry, I lost my place. <laughs> Um, here we go. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. <clears throat> so, as, as I said, God's divine providence is on full display here, but we really do see the difference between that prayerful servant and Jacob, who is an unpraying, a prayerless patriarch, right? All right, guys, let's look now at verse 4. And Jacob said to them, My brethren, where are you from? And they said, We are from Haran. So again, Harana is more the modern, more specific name of the city. The whole area, I believe, is what would have been referred to as Padan Aram. All right, guys. Uh, so here, my brethren, this is a greeting that, um, as a gesture, was rooted in traditional and customary goodwill of the time, and one meant to imply a familiarity and also to give off a sort of unifying tone, right? We are the same, my brethren, my brothers, my sisters, right? We do this today. I do this all the time. It's, again, a way of declaring that we are one. You know what I mean? There's not these big chasms between us that, that often we would like to think or that the enemy would certainly like to make us think. Let's look now at verse 10. And it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. All right, so only adding to Jacob's value if deceived. That's what I wrote here originally. This Abrahamic lineage had prior, in the previous meeting at the well in Genesis 24, had made Laban very desirous of the gold that was on display. That was in chapter 24, verse 30. And now, this great show of strength by Jacob, by, by moving this very large stone, it again piques the interest of Laban. It again pleases Laban, as Jacob could very easily be a source of physical servitude, a source of labor. All right, let's look at verse 11, guys. Hey, by the way, while I'm thinking about it, if you guys are not, I would love to have you check out my YouTube shorts. I drop a new one every morning at 8 o'clock, and I can tell you this, the YouTube algorithm is really unkind a lot of times. You know, I had, so if we look at my last three YouTube shorts, one had almost 200 views, one had like 180 views, and then the, the, the last one today has been out for 12 hours and has been put in front of absolutely zero eyeballs. They do this to me all the time. You guys make the difference, all right? So, verse 11 again. Then Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. Not at all sexual or romantic. This kiss <coughs> was, at this time in the Near East, a customary greeting amongst family. Not just amongst everyone, but amongst family. This is how you would show that familiarity. 
Verse 16, guys. Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. All right, what I'm getting ready to read you here, I, I want to be very clear in that. In reading this, I always feel bad for, um, for Leah because she's truly caught in the middle. I mean, Jacob doesn't have any ill feelings towards her. It's just not who he was seeking as his wife. And so it's really her father. But honestly, both the daughters realize this. They're not tricked by their dads. It's very clear to them how he is, right? And so it does make you feel very bad for Leah and that she is in the middle of this. But she was given four wonderful children. So... Now, names, particularly in the Bible, can say a lot. You know, we talked the other day about the name Israel and how it means one who wrestles with God. We, we had the name Emmanuel, God be with us, right? We, we had the name Isaac, which meant God's laughter, right? We have all these beautiful names. So let's talk about the names Rachel and Leah and see what they tell us. Rachel means you, this would have been like, you know, a prized female piece of livestock, right? And the name Leah recalls a wild cow or, or a wild oxen, kind of a beast of burden. And we do see that with her, that she sort of is saddled in some ways, you could say. Now, let's look at verses 21 through 23 and talk about that, all right? Gosh, you guys are awesome. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in to her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. Now it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah his daughter and brought her to Jacob, and he went in to her. Well, why did he do that if he loved Rachel? Well, I mean, is he no better than some of these modern men or, you know, something like that? Well, let's talk about it, all right? A couple things. <clears throat> First off, let's talk about Jacob already calling Rachel his wife before they're married. What's going on with that? Well, Jacob calling Rachel his wife pre-wedding actually fit perfect with standard practices of the time. He Even the betrothed wife in this culture, in this society, had wife status. And we know this. We know this for a fact because in contemporaneous text, extra-biblical text, we find it. We find it cited in Laws 130 and Laws 161 of the Code of Hammurabi, the Babylonian legal text. Now, also, these were huge feasts, and, and they included a lot of drinking, and they likely went well into the night. All of this leading when, when you've been extremely drunk, and you're taken into someone else's tent, and it's the middle of the night, he was fooled. Jacob was fooled. He, he, he was led to his wrongful bride's tent for consummation. And what we see there is a full circle moment as deception has begot deception. Deception has given birth to new deception. Um, he tricked, Jacob tricked his blind father. And now in darkness, Jacob is tricked. All right, let's look now at verse 24, guys. And Laban gave his maid, Zilpha, to his daughter Leah as a maid. So we see this often with this giving of a maid, the giving of a maid servant, right? Well, the giving of the maid servant to the bride by her father was, I would argue, more about the ability to give than the servant that was given. This was a part of what led to a legal binding. And again, we know this from extra biblical text as well. It is cited and revealed in the more recently uncovered Nuzi tablets, which are from the mid-second millennium B.C., from this date, from this area, and they tell us exactly this. All right, guys? Again, the, the more that it's truly discovered, the more that God's Word is vetted and verified. The more archaeology we do, the, the, the more theological work we do, God is further revealed and further made clear. His truth is powerful and it spans all time. Amen? All right, guys. Let's look now at verse 26. 
And Laban said, It must not be done so in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Again, think about this. We're talking about Jacob. Let me read that again because, again, I said irony could be a whole character in this chapter. Verse 26, guys, what does it say? And Laban said, again, to Jacob, It must not be done so in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. So, <laughs> Jacob's conniving stole a blessing, right? That was due the firstborn. And here, to his woe, a similar custom is upheld. Now he's on the receiving end of these troubles, right? All right, guys, let's get on to our last one today. We're going to look at verses 27 and 28, all right? Fulfill her wheat, and we will give you this one also for the service which you will serve with me still another seven years. Then Jacob did so and fulfilled her wheat. So he gave him his daughter Rachel as wife also. I wrote here, salt in the wound. Jacob must abide by these customs. He must take part in a weak of marital fulfillment. Again, his deception has begot this deception. There's nothing left for him to do but power through. All right, guys. I love you guys so much. I, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I really do love sharing with each and every one of you so much. There are... The enemy's at work hard, guys, right now. He really is. He he is. Not only is the enemy doing everything that he can, but humanity. There is this great falling away. Faith means so little to so many. And it is unbelievably painful to watch. You guys are prayer warriors. I just know it. We have to do it right now, guys. We have to really, really be putting in the intercessionary work to not only pray for ourselves or our brothers and sisters in Christ or our families or, or any of Man, we got to pray for the lost. We got to pray for the broken. We have got to pray for those lives who have been overshadowed by the darkness of the enemy and the lies of this world that are misleading so many. So many. Hell is a very real place. Salvation is a very real necessity. And I pray that each of us knows that. And I pray that each of us has the strength to, to trumpet that. To profess that. Not only in word, but in deed and action and everything. Um, if you're not already, I'd love to have you subscribe to this channel. I drop a brand new video more like this three times a week. I also drop a brand new YouTube short every single morning at 8 o'clock New Mexico time. Again, I'd love to have you watch them and share them if they touch you. Share them if you like them. Also, share other faith-based content because they do everything they can to squash us. Unless you're trumpeting some silly prosperity gospel lies, they do everything they can to squash real, true, biblical content, all right? But, but we can overcome that. I know we can, all right? Um, hit the subscribe button, give the bell a tap, you'll get notified every time I drop a new video. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, drop them in the comment section. If you have a prayer request, I want to hear it, drop it in that comment section. If you are saved, you have a story, it's called a witness, it's called a testimony, and brothers and sisters in a world of... This is something to talk about. This is something to share with friends, with strangers, with, with anyone and Everyone, you don't have to share it here in this comment section. I'd love to hear it. I'm sure there's people out there who could use to read it and hear it as well. But at least be telling it to someone, man, to be given everything that God has given each of us, to be cleansed of our sin, to be set free of this God-awful flesh, to, to be raised to new life in Christ Jesus, to be able to serve the kingdom, to be able to know that we have an eternal hope, to be able to know that we have an eternal home, to be able to know that we will spend all eternity professing holy, holy, holy is the Lord God almighty is something that is worth so much and i'll tell you what it's definitely worth a little bit of time to talk about it all right now guys i love y'all so much father god he loves you even more 
Go out there. Have a blessed day. Be bold. Be certain. Be prayerful. Be mindful. Be discerning. And I'll see you for the next video. All right, guys? Y'all are awesome. Remember, GOE got over everything.